Mercedes-Benz. Since the company's initial inception in 1886, it's always been about elegance, prestige and quality. Now, throughout the ages, Mercedes models have been clearly identifiable by their large front grilles and the infamous imposing upright bonnet star badge, an unmistakable image admired by many across the world as a symbol of quality. So fast forward to the mid 90s and out of the three big German brands, Mercedes still commands a somewhat more prestigious image than the others. Now, this is reflected by the sheer number of wedding cars and chauffeur driven limos you see. The S class reigns almost unchallenged as the choice for delegates, ambassadors and heads of state alike. Within the last 10 to 15 years or so, a problem has been looming on the horizon however. A problem that not only Mercedes is facing, but Jaguar and other marks such as a Cadillac. And their customers aging user base. Now, the typical demographic of a Mercedes customer is your over 50 gentleman with a senior management or CEO role and a bag of golf clubs in the boot. Now, this is not going to last forever and Mercedes realised the need to modernise the company's image to attract new customers, to attract younger buyers to the brand, which if successful will hopefully stick with the brand going forward, ensuring its models will continue to sell and the brand has a healthy future. BMW and to a lesser extent Audi don't really have this issue compared to Mercedes as BMW has always been touted as the ultimate driving machine instead of the elegance and class of Mercedes and is a choice of a more youthful audience with its M division cars. Back in 1995 however, Mercedes purchased AMG, the Afalterback based tuning company and the fight to make Mercedes cool again had begun. Now the halo effects of AMG and its highly desirable models quickly resulted in sales increasing year on year. With the AMG variant of pretty much all of its models, Mercedes is on to an immediate winner. Now, it didn't take the marketing team long to realise that a simple way to boost sales of its more mainstream models was to offer AMG lookalikes, starting with the body kit and AMG wheels to spice up the humdrum diesels etc, ultimately resulting in what we have today with the AMG line spec models. Which brings me on to the point of this video, Mercedes core models. Both the C and E class have always been mini versions of the flagship S class and have always been offered with a traditional style front ends only. Cut price limos if you like. Back in 2007, when Mercedes launched the W204 C class, Mercedes decided to break tradition and introduce two different styling models for this car. The first was the traditional standard upright bonnet star and grille. Now they didn't want to alienate and upset their core loyal customer base. And they also introduced a new style sporty front end with the large centre star and no upright bonnet badge, the change had begun. Here in the UK where I'm located, this new style was an instant success. The sport trim offered a more youthful looking AMG style car, which immediately looked more cool and modern to the youthful crowd. Now for the rest of the car's life, virtually all new models were ordered in the sports trim, effectively killing off the traditional look. Mercedes of course took note. Fast forward to 2019 and with the W205C class as well as the 213E class now established as best sellers there is next to no demand for the traditional look over on these UK shores. However just across the English Channel in Europe as well as the rest of the world both versions are still available on sale. Now with the recent purchase of our 2015 C class within the kilohertz fleet this got me thinking. Surely it can't be that difficult to swap the entire front of our car over to the elegant style, can it? I couldn't be more wrong. So here it is, our 2016 C200 AMG line with only 7,000 miles on the clock and in virtually mint condition. And the car has been purchased by my father and after he's owned a series of Mercedes, the last being a 211 Avant Garde E-Class, he also commented to myself and the Mercedes dealership that none of the cars are the upright bonnet star, only to be told that it's no longer available. Now he made a fair comment, with the car's current look, while there's nothing actually wrong with it, it just doesn't look Mercedes enough. Now my father isn't into the sporty AMG models which I am, he just wants a classy, elegant, traditional style car, so when I offered to swap it over for him, after showing him a series of photos, he gave me the green light. After some research on various forms etc, it quickly became apparent that unlike previous Mercedes in the past, you can't just simply swap over the front grille and be done. 
a completely new front end is required, an entirely new bumper, lower grill trims, as well as the actual grill will need be needed. After hours of searching on German eBay and eBay USA, it didn't really solve the problem though. Obtaining part numbers is one thing, finding the actual items for sale is another. Now, if anyone out there has actually tried searching for second-hand bumpers before, you'll know that they're nearly always damaged. I then had an idea. I'll get in contact with Steve from N-Benz NL. Now, that's an officially recognised Mercedes-Benz retrofitter located in the Netherlands. After a couple of emails, amazingly, he had exactly what I was after. An entire W205 Elegance front end. Now, it turns out that he'd actually done the opposite for a customer. It, removing the Elegance grille and replacing it with a Sport front end. It's in excellent condition with all the parts are required. It just happens to be in a slightly different colour. Now, of course, I didn't hesitate in ordering it. And then around a week or so later, it had arrived. Apparently, the uh, parcels arrived with the new bumper. So let's have a look and see how big this actually is. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, that looks like one gigantic box from M. Benz. <laughs> okay, this is going to take some time to uh, dismantle and get open. With all the packaging, and there was a lot, removed from the bumper, you can now have a good look at the differences between this and the sports bumper still attached to the car. Unfortunately, while the car is painted in diamond silver, the bumper is actually in brilliant silver and will need painted. That said, the bumper as you can see is in excellent condition with no cracks or dents. So here's another look at the bumpers um, both together, just showing you the key differences between the two. Now one thing that's immediately clear to anyone who's actually worked on an older Mercedes is that the large front grille is now actually chrome painted plastic rather than solid metal and it's actually slightly uh, flexible compared to one of the earlier first generation C-classes. I suspect this is for a couple of reasons, first being that it's probably a lot more cheaper to produce and I dare say it's a form of cost cutting but it's actually probably more likely it's for pedestrian crash protection as the bumper now has a little bit of movement to protect the legs or torso of someone if they're accidentally hit. Now this final shot here should give you a good idea of what the end result I'm going for. Um, I'm looking for a kind of baby S class if you like. Right, so here's the bumper back from the body shop. As you can see, they've done a perfect job. And the colour match is excellent. It's got a great shine on it. And if you look closely, they've done all between the actual clips and everything, all the proper areas and so on. Now, if you look at here, the actual reflection and the lacquer is fantastic. Now, the body shop I use are actually recognised by Mercedes and they're used by my local dealership. Now, the key thing with getting uh, going to a body shop is you get what you pay for. Make sure you go to a quality paint shop and it'll look as brand new as this. My front bumper is off as you can see here and I've lined it up on the ground with its replacement. 
Now removing the front bumper isn't too difficult if you've done this kind of body work before. It's just the usual case of going around the bumper from one side, um, removing the wheel arch liner, accessing the bolts, then onto the other side, and then open up the bonnet, access the bolts there, as well as the uh, plastic under shield. But once you've removed all that, then you should just be, in theory, just be able to pull the bumper forward. One part which is obvious with the two types of bumper sitting side by side are the differences in vent grills. Now the original sport bumper features a kind of honeycomb style grill effect in keeping with its sportier appearance. And the elegance bumper features horizontal slats, I guess you could call them, across the entire bumper. Now the central slat is actually part of the inner bumper frame. As a result, without major modification work and work to disassemble the entire structure, I've decided to keep the sportier version and only swap over the left and right sides, keeping them with the sportier appearance of the car. And this is the elegance vent cover, which I just mentioned, compared to the sport version, which I'm going to keep. I'm now going to tackle the inner gubbins of the bumper. All its electrical connectors, as well as the wiring loom that I have to transfer over from one bumper to the other. As this car is spec with the front parking sensors, each one of these in turn will need to be unplugged and the actual sensors removing from the housing. Now this also involved working your way across the bumper, unclipping the wiring harness as you go. Now this is not the most straightforward thing to do while you're holding a camera, I'll add. Once you've done all this, you need to turn your attention to this little black box. Now this is the front collision detection warning system, which is in turn linked to this peculiar white rubber tube. Again, all this needs to be removed. Now this is the collision system I was referring to. I need to take extra care with this. If I damage it, it will of course stop working but it was also trigger a dashboard error that would in turn need coding out. Ten to fifteen minutes later, and I'm pretty much done transferring all the electronics over with very little trouble. Now the only complication I've had was this one stubborn parking centre that will need a little bit more effort freeing from its housing. There's always one, isn't there? So it's the first test fitting. Already looks amazing in my opinion. Just got to tighten up the side clamps, make sure it's all lined up. Okay guys, so we're now on the following day, due to a fading daylight yesterday, and we're making serious progress now. I've secured the two wings to the two sides of the bumper, which is trickier than I initially expected. Although simple enough once you figure out how the clips all go together, as well as the wheel arch liners. So the next item which I need to address in order to fully convert this over to the elegant specification is to install the upright bonnet star badge. Here in the UK, the only model which Mercedes now sells with this installed is the S-Class. Removing the current flat badge is simply a case of squeezing together the two spring-loaded tabs. As I mentioned, it's only available for the S-Class within the UK. As a result, it comes with an S-Class price tag, it seems. Now, I get the trade price from my local dealership. However, this still cost me over £41, which I find completely outrageous. As little as 10 years ago, you could get these for just over £20. 
I'll add the part number in the video's description below. Now the upright bonnet star may be expensive and no doubt will probably be stolen fairly quickly but overall I think it's definitely worth it. Now this is what gives the Mercedes that classic look. So here is a close up of the uh, original sport version of the side grills. As I said before I should have really swapped these over for the elegant spec versions However, I reckon these look a lot better. Hopefully you guys will also agree with me. And not to forget that I've installed all the front parking sensors and seated them in the correct positions, as well as the hidden collision warning system, which is hidden inside the bumper, and there's no dashboard errors whatsoever. If I quickly run around and get inside the car, I can show you that classic look of the upright star from the driving position. And here's the star, peering out over the bonnet with that classic look looking like a crosshair. So something I touched upon earlier regarding the front grille and its flexibility compared to older Mercedes which had completely rigid metal grilles. So I've seen people complaining online about the quality of the chrome which is now used as it's actually plastic covered as opposed to being completely metal. So you can see here that it's actually quite flexible and bendy. So the reason for this is pedestrian crash protection. So if you think about it and you're hit by a car, what would you prefer? A grille that can absorb a small amount of impact or a grill that stays put and possibly causes you terrible injury. I know which one I'd prefer. So here we have the final completed job, a W205 C-Class with the classic or elegance front end. Now it looks like a real Mercedes in my eyes, a mini baby S-Class if you like, which looks fantastic. Now in this video clip, you'll notice that the passenger wing looks ever so slightly different colour than the bumper. Now I can assure you that it isn't, this shot was taken a mere one day after it was painted. As a result, the lacquer can appear slightly different on camera, which settles down in time, but with the actual, the actual eye, it looks identical. Now some of my international viewers will be thinking, why on earth have you gone to all this effort to change it to look like a more common standard looking Mercedes? Now you have to remember what I said earlier in this video about rarity. Now in the UK, this model and specification isn't available. So what I've created is quite possibly the only W205 in the UK right-hand drive with this conversion. And as I say, it's all about rarity. So if anyone's watching this who's based in the UK and would like to have this done to their own car, please get in touch. Additionally, if you have a W212 or 213 E-Class and you'd also like this doing, as these, these trim wasn't available over here either, then I can do that and I'd love to create a video on it, so also please get in touch. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It does help the channel grow. And if you haven't done already, click on that subscribe button and notification bell, so you're notified as soon as I upload any new videos. Until next time, thanks again for watching, cheers.